The Voyager spacecraft are the flagships of space exploration. Launched in the 70s, these incredible scientific tools have been serving NASA for nearly half a century. But all good things must come to an end. The Voyager spacecraft are no exception. So, when will we finally lose contact with these amazing spacecraft? What are we going to do until then? And what will become of their life after they cut ties with home? A long-distance relationship. In short, we're going to lose contact with the Voyager spacecraft very soon. Both 1 and 2 are billions of kilometers away and have been long complete with their initial missions. Now, as part of their extended missions, they continue onward past our solar system into interstellar space. While Voyager 2 still has five functioning instruments for measuring the void, Voyager 1 has four. Despite the recent upgrade to our communication systems, the spacecraft still only have a finite amount of power. Both Voyagers are expected to last another five years or so until their batteries die out. When that power runs out, there's literally nothing we can do to extend its life. Both are powered by electricity generated by the heat of radioactive plutonium, launched by NASA on September 5, 1977. To study the outer solar system, Voyager 1 is the farthest human-made object from Earth. As of January 28, 2021, the space probe is more than 14.2 billion miles or 22.8 billion kilometers away from our home planet. Moving at a speed of 38,000 miles per hour or 61,200 kilometers per hour, it is far from our reach. Despite that huge distance, thanks to NASA's deep space network, we can still communicate with it. But how far can Voyager 1 go before we lose communication? Using the deep space network, NASA transmits a 20 kilowatt radio signal from Earth. It takes more than 21 hours for the signal to reach Voyager 1. The space probe's sensitive antenna picks up the signal and replies using a 20 watt signal. It takes another 21 plus hours to reach the Earth. And as the signal travels through space, it weakens. By the time it reaches Earth, it's barely detectable. Theoretically, there isn't really a limit on how far we can communicate with objects in space as long as they reply back to us. With our current technology, we could reliably communicate with Voyager 1 for thousands of years, even if it's many light years away from us. Despite that, we can communicate with Voyager 1 only for a few more years. The probe's nuclear-powered electrical supply weakens each day. Back in 1990, in order to save power, engineers turned off the spacecraft's camera. But before that, at the request of Carl Sagan, a scientist and legendary science communicator, it was commanded by NASA to turn its camera around and to take a photograph of Earth across a great expanse of space. Taken from a record distance of about 3.7 billion miles or 6 billion kilometers from Earth, the photo is known as the pale blue dot. In the photograph, Earth is shown as a fraction of a pixel against the vastness of space. Despite its age, the old probe still amaze us. On November 28, 2017, a set of thrusters abroad had successfully fired up for the first time since November 1980, after 37 years without use. Today, only 4 out of 11 scientific instruments of Voyager 1 are still active. These instruments are being used to collect data on magnetic fields, solar wind, and cosmic rays outside of our solar system. On August 25, 2012, Voyager 1 became the first spacecraft to cross the heliopause both of the Voyager's extended missions are expected to continue until around 2025, when its radioisotope thermoelectric generators will no longer supply enough electric power to operate its scientific instruments. Until then, the Voyagers will continue on their missions to extend the NASA exploration of the solar system beyond the neighborhood of the outer planets to the outer limits of the Sun's sphere of influence and possibly beyond. This extended mission is continuing to characterize the outer solar system environment and search for the heliopause boundary, the outer limits of the sun's magnetic field, and the outward flow of the solar wind. Penetration of the heliopause boundary between the solar wind and the interstellar medium will allow measurements to be made of the interstellar fields, particles, and waves unaffected by the solar wind. At that time, it will be more than 15.5 billion miles or 25 billion kilometers away from Earth. Until then, Scientists will continue to communicate with Voyager 1 and receive the important information it gathers until it eventually sends its last bit of data and disappears silently into space, never to be heard from again. Life after. Ominous, I know. So, 
What happens after the final signal? It must be lonely traveling out beyond the edge of the solar system. At some point, the sun will be just another point of light amongst the backdrop of the infinite expanse. As the years go by and the kilometers add up, our home planet will fade into the background, lost amongst the stars. It's almost inconceivable. Two small spacecrafts, each no bigger than a car, made here on Earth and flung into space. Their missions were nearly over, their power supplies almost exhausted, their ultimate fates to wander the vast expanses of the Milky Way alone. After 1989, the Voyager probe's primary mission was over. The most distant of the siblings, Voyager 1, now sits 13 billion miles or 21 billion kilometers from the Sun. That's 140 times greater than the distance from the Earth to the Sun. On August 25, 2012, Voyager 1 reached a new milestone. It became the first human-made object to truly exit the solar system. After that momentous event, Voyager 1 is now adrift between the stars light years of essentially nothing between it and, well, nothing else. In about 300 years, the craft will reach the inner boundary of the Oort cloud, the thin, diffuse shell of frozen debris left over from the formation of the solar system. Voyager 1 will eventually come within 1.6 light years from the star Gliese 445. It won't occur for another 40,000 years, but in astronomical terms, that's practically a near miss. After that, it gets a little difficult to predict Voyager's journey given how much empty space is between the stars. The spacecraft's visit near Gliese 445 is probably the closest that Voyager 1 will approach another star ever. In 200 million years, the lonely spacecraft will complete its first circumnavigation of our galaxy. What they carry The Voyager spacecraft carry more than just scientific instruments, which will be rendered useless in a few more years. Tucked between those instruments, bolted to the exterior of each spacecraft is a small golden disk. Etched into that disk are diagrams showing the location of the Sun relative to nearby known, flashing dense cores of stars called pulsars, representations of the hydrogen atom, and instructions. Following the pictograms, one could construct a spinning platform and a stylus, spinning the disk to interpret the vibrations in the stylus as sound waves. Those sound waves carry raw information, but also, recordings of sounds from here on Earth, voices, nature, and music from around the world. The record was designed by a committee led by Carl Sagan and Frank Drake, an astronomer whose famous equation purports to estimate the odds of finding extraterrestrial life. The record is intended to be an everlasting emissary of Earth, a thin slice of what humanity is. For sure, this golden record will outlive its creators and maybe even us as a species. It's a bold and noble effort, but the likely reality is that it is doomed for nothingness. Interstellar space is just a whole lot of nothing. There's an incredible amount of open room between our galaxy, when 1.6 light years are considered close. In addition to the extreme rarity of life, the Voyager probes are almost certainly fated to touch nothing but microscopic interstellar dust for billions of years. It's crazy to think that these machines still have so much life left for them. The brief history that was our solar system will only be a blip in the long, lonely life of these vessels. Even smaller the amount of time we have left to communicate with them. Unless Voyager encounters something amazing within the next five years, it's more than likely that our interstellar friends are done speaking to us.